we go. Morning, everybody. Um, thank you, Alan. Thanks, uh, Emma and Liz, for speaking. Um, big books to fill now, so we'll see how we go. <laughs> it's great to be in person again. You know, it's fantastic. It really is to be able to engage with everybody. You know, one to one it makes a massive difference. So, uh, thank you for everybody making the effort. Um, just a quick brief background. So. Uh, myself there, obviously I'll introduce myself, Mark Whitehead, Construction Director at CPOT Modular. Um, I don't know if anybody's uh, familiar with a high performance podcast, but kind of my sort of three non-negotiables, I suppose, is uh, honesty. You know, we really want it need to be honest, because the, the big thing that we've got, the problem at the minute we've got in the construction industry, is that I don't think people are honest how far along they are in journeys. So we're honest at CPAC and we look at what we need to do. And to be honest, sometimes the truth hurts and it isn't nice to hear the truth. So, you know, we've got to swallow that pill and we've got to move forward. So honesty is a massive thing. Adaptability is a huge thing that we've got to find in our industry, especially within modular and offsite. We're always being asked, can you do this? Can you look at it this way? Can you do this for us? And we've not failed yet. We always look at a way to uh, come up with a solution for a problem and it could be a could be a huge skylight, it could be a big open space, you know, in a modular construction, very difficult to achieve. But what we do is we look at our in-house design team, we look at a structural engineer that's in-house, we brought everything in so we can all sit together, we can have the brainstorm and we can look at how we can go about things differently and we always come up with a solution that we feel is great for the client and for us. And then thirdly is the, the passion. So I think, you know, one thing we've got to have is whatever we're doing, we've got to have the passion. So, you know, there's massive things within my life at the minute that I'd say I've got passion for, but you know, construction at the minute is huge. We really are pushing the boundaries with modular construction and off-site construction, and it's a great field to be, uh, to be a part of. So I'm gonna just push on now to talk a little bit about um, what we're gonna talk about today. So we're gonna talk about just two things on our journey so far that we've implemented that we've found have been a huge help, a massive benefit for our company. So it's a common data environment and it's our Moving on from what Liz was talking about is the, the CPAP module, it's the VR campus that we've created. So just going to step forward just to have a look at just sort of a brief history of CPAP modular. So one thing that, look, it's our history, it's what we used to do, you know, we're proud of it, we don't do it anymore, but at the time it was very there, it was, a part of the, it was a, the backbone of this business, the Jack Leg Cabins, started around about over 40 years ago by uh, the O'Shea's, they were still family owned, so it's a fantastic business to be part of. And the, be the best thing about being owned by a family business like the O'Shea's was that the main man himself, Crone, he, he wanted to push this business on. He wanted to see what could happen, how far we could develop it. So we moved then on to a temporary modular with kind of a five year lifespan. So you've seen the, you know, the old port cabins in the class, in the schoolyards out there. You know, again, it's something that had to happen to fulfill a demand. And then we moved on to hybrid modular, which we're extremely proud about, which we've delivered some hybrid modular schools at the minute, which to be honest, we'll deliver them to a site where the school teachers and the principals within the existing school, they'll be fighting to get into this hybrid modular school because all of a sudden they've got an environment where it's, it's, it's warm when it needs to be warm, it's cool when it needs to be cool, they've got a comfortable environment to teach in, the kids are comfortable, they're not complaining about the hot, the cold, it's a great place to, to learn. So that's where we really are now. The hybrid modular is a fantastic product and obviously now we're onto the permanent modular. So the permanent modular, we're looking at student accommodation, we're looking at hotels, we're looking at schools, you know, the, the, the possibilities are endless. So we really are pushing forward now just to see exactly how far we can push the limits of, um, excuse me, of uh, modular construction. So kind of our digital journey so far, look, we've, we're have we very early stage of our digital journey. We, we still think we're, you know, we've got a long way to go. And to be honest, the way the digital construction is going, and the technology that they're advancing, I don't think we'll ever be finished. There's always gonna be something that we can look at, something further we can move on to. So all we're trying to do is, we're looking at the possibilities, we're looking at the opportunities, and we're choosing what's right for us, okay? That's the one thing that we've gotta do. We're not gonna go down a channel and, and, and get lost down that channel just because everybody else is doing it. That's not what we're about. We're looking for what's good for us, okay, and for the client. So our digital journey so far, so we use, you know, Evercam, they're sponsoring us today, Evercam construction cameras, 
fantastic product, absolutely amazing. You know, really is live construction feed there for us. So when we're in the office, when we're speaking to clients, we've got live information within that. Now, obviously, they're offering the the, uh, the drone footage. So we've got the drones that are flying over, doing all the scanning for 3D, for 4D. We can do all kinds of things with Evercam. It's fantastic. It really is. Uh, obviously, we're using you know, the, the the standards, you know, the Autodesk Revit. We're using Tecla. We're using 4D planning software, which is an amazing tool. You know, you, something that really companies have got to start looking at in more depth, because we can do a. So we might land a, a 50 module building onto a site. We can do that land before we've gone to site. We can look. We can put the crane in place. We can see. We can set a, a limit. A, a, sorry, a weight on a on a module. Could be five ton. Could be six ton. We can then see what that crane is capable of doing, where it can lift positions and everything, and we can talk through the whole process before we've actually done it. So it really does iron out any tweaks before we need to get to site. Autodesk Construction Cloud, which again I'll speak about a little bit later on the CDE, and Autodesk Navit works, and then obviously you know. The, the, the old VR goggles here. So they're you know, a really big part of what we're doing. But the one thing that I'd like to stress, and I think Emma and Liz did a little bit as well there, well they did stress it, is it's the people you know, within the company. That's the main thing. So that's our uh, design team there. So you know, that's a real massive part. You've got to have the guys there that are wanting to push on, that are wanting to do this. We do everything at CPAC, so this, this photo here is uh, Rory's stories, you remember Rory from Rory's stories? We got him to come in and do a talk to the whole company on uh, mental health and you know the, the way to go about the daily life and any help that could be needed. That was a massive success. And then we've got guys like this, <laughs> this fella here, best picture I could get of him. He's been with the company for 35 years. He's, you know, lives and breathes it, absolutely loves it. And the one thing that he has done He's completely embraced all the digital technology that we've thrown at him. Whether it be an iPad, whether it be a VR, you know, whether it be 4D planning, he absolutely loves it. He can't get enough of it. He's, he's sat there thinking, why wasn't this around 35 years ago? You know, and that's brilliant to see because, you know, out of everybody that you'd think in the whole of our company, we've got over 100 employees. He might be one that you'd sort of earmark as being possibly difficult to, to transition, but not, not, not in the slightest. It really is, it's, it's amazing. And the one thing that if you can get somebody like that in your company to jump on board with this, everybody else then looks up to him and thinks, well, if, if Dave Tate's doing it and we're doing it, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing, it's an amazing tool. So I just want to talk a little about, about the CDE common data environment, okay? So when, when I first started working for CPAP Modular, we had a situation where um, we were using a lot of different platforms for storing information, whether it be drawings, whether it be information, whether it be specifications. So it's probably something everybody's looked at before in this room, but look, I'm going to run through it here. So one thing that had happened is, you know, we'd have the, we, we, we obviously got the, the, the whole process of how we do a project. So we've got the client side. So we've got the client's QS, the architect, the project managers, the actual client, the client's design team. And then kind of on our side, this is broken down, this could go huge. We've got our procurement side, as design team, as module installers, as module assemblers in the factory, as QS, as production manager, and as CPAC operations team, okay? So early on in a project, what starts happening is client's architect starts speaking to our design team, okay? That's fine, that's brilliant. And then the client's PM starts speaking to our design team. And then all of a sudden, QS starts speaking to the client, client starts speaking to the design team, Dirt, 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 keeps moving, keeps moving, keeps moving, and then you've got this situation, okay? And now, when you're in this situation, say six weeks into a project before it started, all of a sudden I'm sat there in the operations team and I'm wanting to get a drawing from our design team, okay? So instantly we've got an issue. Have I got the latest information, the latest drawing, the latest specification, okay? What we've had on site is, we've had our guys on site, our site installers, they'll be stood there and they'll be painting this wall red, Okay, because it says it on the drawing, and then the client's architect will turn up and say, that's meant to be blue. And, there's, and all of a sudden they've got to go backtrack and we've got no backup to say it should have been red or it should have been blue. It's a very simple thing, but it made a huge difference, okay? So what we did is, we looked at, sorry, and we had all the information shared on the likes of SharePoint, on the OneDrive, Microsoft Outlook in people's emails, on Teams, and then the worst one, on people's desktops, okay? It, information on people's desktops that nobody else could use so somebody's away for two weeks somebody you know something terrible happens and they're not around you know it's it's, it's awful because obviously we haven't got that information okay so what we did is we we have a, a sort of our projects have got a process obviously so we've got the tender stage we've got the design stage we've got the procurement stage we've got the manufacturing site stage off-site then we've got the on-site stage 
Then within that, we've got to get health and safety within that. We've got to get quality within that. And what happened pre, as, as, as pre the CDE is that all these ended up being in silos, okay? So all this information was going in the right direction, but the sharing of information wasn't good enough. It wasn't happening. So then what happened is it all funnels down and all of a sudden you get this finish point, okay? And this finish point, all of a sudden, all this information's come down there, but not all the information tallies up. So all of a sudden your as-built drawings are a lot harder to look at, your specifications, and then everybody wants the, the, the comprehensive O&M manual. So they want to know what kind of paint we use there, what floor coverings there, and all of a sudden pulling that information together becomes extremely, extremely difficult. So what we decided is we needed a CDE, we needed a common data environment. So we implemented, we got the client side again, we got our CPAC side, we implemented the Autodesk Construction Cloud as our common data environment, okay? And what that's meant is that all of a sudden, we've got a process, an information flow, where everybody, okay, whoever, no matter who you are, you're all coming into this point, into this CD, whether it be on your iPad, whether it be in your computer, whether it be in e you can get that information from the common data environment. And any information now is pushed in and pushed out, and all the client side are on board, they're all signing in. All of a sudden, you've got this environment where we've got complete, trust that this site installer is looking at the correct drawing because it's been pushed in there, it's the latest construction drawing, okay? And I'm not going to tell you that this has been foolproof, it certainly hasn't. There's been a few kinks where we've had to sort of, you know, information's not being pushed correctly, but once you get the process flows and the information flowing properly, all this works really well and all of a sudden you've got less mistakes on site, quicker projects and you get into that end goal. So. Just another simple one there, so this again, a CDE, all of a sudden, as tender design, procurement, uh, off-site, on-site, health and safety quality, all of a sudden flows a lot better as well. Everything's going in and out of that process, and ultimately, what that means is, we're getting to this finish goal of much quicker, much more efficiently, and at the end, it's a matter of clicking a couple of buttons and you've got your own end manual. It's there, you know, and the client then all of a sudden has got this uh, information to hand that they can then, you know, look at this and say, wow, this has been a, a real smooth process. It's been really efficient. You know, let's use these guys again because we've all been involved in projects where everybody's chasing at this last minute to get the O and M manual. Have you got this? Uh, have you got this DOP? Have you got a CE mark? And the last thing we want is, unfortunately, is any architect or engineer turning around to us and saying that you know you haven't got a CE for that a CE for that uh, piece of material or that uh, uh, document, so you can't use it. And obviously, the thing's built. So <laughs> the whole approval process, we've got to get that smoother as well. So, one thing that we've done is we've, we've created now, so we've created a, 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 a VR campus, okay? So what the aim of this is, is it's trying to get people involved where they're putting the goggles on, they're putting the VR goggles on, and they can walk around a, a school building, they can walk around a, a healthcare facility, and they can see it, they can, you know, they can really get a feeling of what is possible and what they might be getting, okay? This is the VR version, obviously, the AR version, you know, that, that's, that's coming along as well, but the VR version for us at the minute is, is extremely good. It's, it's, it's give, opened some, uh, some big doors for us. So this is a VR version of a, of a nursing home. So that's what people see when they see the nursing home from outside. You see the cladding, you see all the, 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 the texture. Then we've got our CPAP modular office building and we've got a live building site, a student accommodation, we've got the crane in, we've got everything there so you can actually walk around, you can see it all happening. We've got a healthcare facility there, so again, you can see the healthcare facility, you can walk down, you can see the beds, and we've got an office environment, okay? So what that all means is that we can walk around, let me just get into this, apologies. So this is our VR camp uh, campus, okay? So we're still in the middle of campus now, and what I will say is that we've got the VR goggles, okay? So as soon as this is done, and we're all finishing with our Q&A, if anybody would like to have a, a go, we're sticking around for half an hour to put the goggles and having a walk around. But if I can just show you a couple of examples. So that's the nursing home. And if you imagine with the VR goggles, the 3D environment, you can see absolutely, it's, it's, it's amazing. You really can, you can see all the, the detail. We'll take you into a medical reception next. Okay, so there's your medical reception. We're taking into a, an exam room, and you can walk around the exam room. You can see all the material fitted. 
uh, all the sockets, everything done. But what this means is that before we build these things, we can take, if this is a school classroom, we can take the principal into that school before it's built and we can show them the round and can say, right, is the teaching desk right in this position? Is the socket right there? Do you need this? Do you... And we can try and eliminate the sort of the, the afterworks that happen, because that happens quite a lot for us within modular, because we've still got the, uh, the big issue with off-site construction, obviously, that you know, once it gets to site, to make the changes, it's too late, really. It, it happens, but we're trying to get people away from that. So this is where a tool like this is, is really, really beneficial. So, you know, office receptions, everything and anything. Student accommodation, the cranes, you know, it's, it's a great tool. So, like I say, we've got this available here. So once everything's finished, please do come and, uh, and have, a, have, a, have a go and have a look. And uh, I can't find my, th my, my last slide. But I'd like to thank everyone for listening. I know I haven't gone, uh, you know, quite as much detail as everyone else, but I hope that the sort of the passion's come across and, you know, we really are pushing forward. So if anybody would like to chat afterwards, we're available there. Thank Thanks. you very much.